I have a cupcake. I have a cupcake. I have a cupcake. Hey, hey, hey. Can we just leave that in? Can that be the actual start of the episode? That's, that's the new intro. <laughs> Hello, and welcome back to Makers on Tap, the podcast where Makerspace members and president drink and talk about making stuff in the maker culture. I am your host tonight, Christian, and joining me tonight are... President Aaron, King Maker. <laughs> Please. Ex-President Joe. Excellent, excellent. And tonight we're here to talk about some maker news topics that are hitting the uh, the news. And we're also going to be discussing an interesting topic of following popular opinion versus being able to find out for yourself over research. And before we start into any of that, let's talk about the most important thing. What are you guys drinking tonight? Vodka and Coke. <laughs> Classic. I'm not going to embellish it. <laughs> I at least put effort into the things that I drink in the podcast. I'm drinking a little crazy from Revolution Brewing. It's a Belgian style pale ale, and it's quite delicious. And also, before we go too much farther, congrats on that intro, Chris. That was the best intro you've ever done. Yeah. Oh, kudos. Fair enough. Fair enough. Thank you. Thank you. I'm I'm slowly feeling into this over what this will be and we'll discuss about this later our 20th episode <laughs> now, that's like 20 episodes of just us BSing with each other not interviews and other weird stuff otherwise right. we have a lot more but still that's a whole nother thing though is just like how long we've actually been doing this but we're going to get into that a little bit later um i will make a quick mention as to what my drink is which will subtly hint to my co-host, uh, some good conversations. Tonight, I am drinking a dank meme uh, by the brewery Triptych. So that'll yeah. subtly hint some things towards my co-host that we may have some exciting things happening in the future. Oh. Um, little tease for you right now. We'll see how that goes. But uh, as you know, we love Triptych and their stuff that they've put out. Um, and so we look forward to possibly uh, drinking more of them in the future. That's the meanest <laughs> thing you've done to me in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, Chris. So we, uh, we'll see. We'll, we'll see how things go. So, <laughs> um, But first, we're going to jump into the Maker News topics. Uh, and to start it right off, we have some interesting news uh, about Maker Geek. Um, do you want to take this one, Eric? Yeah, so apparently Maker Geeks has finally officially shut down. Finally. They have been the butt of many jokes in the 3D printing community and the root of a lot of issues. Just lots of failed order fulfillments and runarounds by customer service, Better Business Bureau investigations. They have an F on the Better Business <laughs> Bureau. An F. Wow. Okay. So there's a thread on Reddit where someone was asking for an update on one of their orders, and they got a response saying, oh, well, unfortunately, we had to close our doors. And they gave a whole thing on, you know, we just couldn't handle the, the fast expansion of our business, and coupled with migrating our website to a new thing, and we couldn't keep track of orders and stuff. N nobody's buying it. Yeah. Nobody's buying your, your email there. No, they even like threw a part in there about just being in a small town was causing issues. And like, yeah, these are an online business. There's not a lot that has to do with a small town. Yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> we grew too big for our own good. Like, you've been saying that for three years, guys. Come on. Nobody, nobody's buying it. But here's the thing. They registered four new URLs the day they closed their doors. And their filament is showing up on Amazon now. They didn't even do a good job with their copy pasta. It still says Maker Geeks in the descriptions that they posted up under the new company names. Oh. So, oh, <laughs> like, this makes me wonder if they're either selling off their old understock under a different name through Amazon fulfillment, which would be good because Amazon fulfillment just won't let you list it unless they have it, which was yeah. the, always their problem. They would always right. sell things they didn't have. Or, you know, I don't know. 
was was that by chance the the filament I saw popping up on the Facebook group that was the filament that was for like 60 bucks? No, that was a uh like a color blend filament. Oh, uh, okay. I I just saw that and it looked weird and I was like, I don't know, that guy for... hasn't been around very long cuz he's like $60 is asinine for filament and I'm like, have you been like if you been here in the olden days, we paid sixty dollars for a pound of filament because you just couldn't buy it. And everyone, right. everyone's all spoiled now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, young whippersnappers. They all want that Amazon basic filament. <laughs> that stuff is horrible. <laughs> I have yeah. two kilograms. If you want it, I don't. I, How bad is I'm it? Good. Well, I guess why is it bad? Um, I haven't been able to get a print that doesn't look like a teenager that's like trying to go to prom. It's like get my camera to focus it's just covered huh. in pimples and strings. And it's, yeah, I have a roll of the, the PTG from it and it's not it's not bad. I mean, I, I certainly don't have the stringiness that you're having. I have some stringiness, but I've always had that with PTG on my printer. This is PLA. And running Atomic uh, next to this in the tool head next to it, I can get very good results. Maybe this stuff's wet. I don't know. But like the colors didn't come right. This was supposed to be dark blue. It's like a light teal. And the other mm. one was supposed to be neon green. And it's like sea foam. And I don't know. It's just garbage. <laughs> Jeez. I'll keep that sound bite in. <laughs> As he threw the printed object over his head. <laughs> nonchalantly without a care in the world (laughs) (laughs) so i will i will try and expertly segue into the speaking of uh trying to make the best of your prints uh kira is dropping a pretty big update that was unexpected but is very welcome uh joe do you want to go into that Yes, this is specifically Lulzbot Kira, not Kira Vanilla right. from Ultimaker. Um, so this was this version is three point six point three, and incidentally, I had actually downloaded the uh, beta version of this a couple days before they actually launched it, and um, I was like, "Oh man!" So this release includes things such as custom supports custom support blockers which you know make it so that support doesn't show up where you don't want it to that's super neat it includes a dark theme which Woo! when coupled with <laughs> the little spot green is the sexiest slicer i've ever seen hashtag save my eyes <laughs> yes slicer life <laughs> Those were the really, really big things. It also enabled backlash compensation for the Z-axis, which is pretty neat. Oh, neat. Um, mm-hmm. But those were the main things. So I was able to take a part that I um, I specifically needed support in these one areas to keep shape on the part, but I didn't want support in some other very specific areas because I had modeled in threads and done some other things where the support was detrimental. And I had to use Simplify, and I hated it. Hmm. But now I can use Kira, and there's one more spike in the Simplify grave. Yeah. I mean, at this point, like, Kira's getting to the point where why go away from it? Because it really just does everything you need it to. Um, it doesn't, it's called it doesn't do scripting. Prusa edition. And Which it's also... Awesome. <laughs> Doesn't Fair do enough. the scripting that I need it to do. Yeah, I mean, it does, but not quite. But you know what does? Pathio. Pathio, Pathio <laughs> does the scripting I want. But we have other things. We have other things to talk about before. Yeah, that. we're gonna get into that. We're gonna get yeah. into that. I will say, uh, the Prusa Slicer Edition, uh, no Slicer Prusa Edition. It they're gonna be coming out with SLA support once his SLA printer drops. Oh. I'm super excited. It would generate the G code for it. I don't know if it's going to control the printer or not. I guess we'll see when that happens. Because right now, That'd only Nano DLP is the only like all-in-one SLA printer control software. Right. And it's not even actively maintained, and it's closed sourced, and he won't open it, even though he's done with it. Which, yeah. yeah. No, so that's we'll, let's, let's hope Prusa fixes it. Anyways, go ahead. 
That was a slight tangent. No. So, uh, well, and that's it. We're going to kind of go back to you um, on Open Builds uh, just is releasing a black box, which we actually got a cool um, shout out from you or our Twitter. We we had a little conversation with them. Yeah. Um, so do you want to go into that since you were the one who kind of yeah. sparked some interest with them? I have been following this project for a long time. Um, they teased this project at, like two or three years ago under the name Apex. It was going to be the apex of CNC controllers. I will say they had very large dreams for it, very large ambitions. What they ended up doing, so I guess originally they're going to do uh, like have dynamic drivers, so you'd get the really the, get the silent stepping, so quiet drivers. Yeah, it was going to be a smoothie controller, and I think it was going to be thirty-two bit, so it'd be like very future-proof. Mm-hmm. And they had a, a lot of big expectations and plans for it, but over the years they kind of scope creep and scope creep so within the last year they really hammered down on the scope and they've reduced it a lot to what they have now which is also a very good looking controller but it is an 8-bit gerbil controller running version 1.1 f um, it has four 3.2 amp stepper drivers with a max rating of four amps so they're oversized so they can get a lot of reliability and life out of them a lot of end stop and you know spindle coolant accessory controls there are some additional relay controlled outputs for on off controlling what's really interesting is that they actually separated out the control board from the what so they had what they call the muscle board and the brains board yeah so the brains board is going to have your gerbil con- your your um, atmel microcontroller everything mm-hmm. that needs to then run and then communicate to the muscle board which will have your stepper drivers power control stuff and all that whatever so one thing when i saw that and i was slightly disappointed well here's the thing i was super excited when they finally released it because i've been waiting for so long and then i look into it i'm like wait this it's a gerbil board i thought it was gonna be smoothie and i look into it and a lot of a lot of uh concessions were made but, you know, it's still a good controller. I, ha- I had this thought that I thought it interesting that they had the two separate boards in here. So I tweeted at them. I'm like, hey, you know, since you have the brains board abstracted out from the muscle board, does that mean we'll have non gerbil controller board options in the future? And we got a, a tweet back from Open Build saying, hmm, interesting idea. <laughs> so, so maybe. I'm going to come back at you. With something that might break your head. But I'm actually not disappointed that this is a gerbil board versus a smoothie board. It's only breaking my head because I know you. Right. (laughs) And I'll tell you why. Because the only thing worse than smoothie with a CNC, or the only thing worse than gerbil with CNC, is smoothie with a CNC. (laughs) Oh my god. I've had... I have three different smoothie-based boards that were built for CNCs, and none of them are on a machine, and it's for a reason. Basically, the only thing I think smoothie is good for at this point is lasers. It's it's the only thing that it hasn't been surpassed with with some other control method. Interesting. Hmm. You know, the the Duet guys are are targeting lasers with RepRap firmware. They they need to catch up a little bit on the PWM generation, but once they do that, I... I don't know. I don't know. I, I hope Smoothie 2 brings a lot to the table. I Okay, so with the Gerbil boards, we can do true gantry homing. So you can home each side of the gantry independently right now. Uh, you can do uh, tool probing really easily. Um, you can do that in Smoothie, but it's not very easy. You can control the spindles very easily with the way they've broken that out with the brains board. Um, it's, it's just, it's a very well thought out box and I'm really actually quite happy with the implementation that they did. Yeah. Um, I'm really excited that they had the forethought to put, uh, the, the four amp max drivers in. Cause that means if I wanted to, I could buy that and put that on my CNC router. That's got 450 ounce inch stepper motors on it, which are all wired to run at four amps. Um, so I, I, it's a really good implementation. I uh, I don't 
hate it. I still don't like Gerbil, but <laughs> um, I like it better than Smoothie. So fair enough. Yeah, yeah. I'm still I'm still probably going to get one just because I've got the, the little router behind me. It's um, perfect for something like that. Yeah, absolutely. Perfect. It, if there was a good uh, controller and I, it's been a little while since I tried the open builds one, so I'm excited to try that. It, if there was a good controller that allowed for um, jogging at a fixed rate instead of a fixed distance, uh, I would be all about it. That's like that's like the thing I'm really missing right now um, on the uh, baby mill, uh, which I just made some updates to tonight. If I had that on the baby mill, I wouldn't have to program the job that I'm setting up on it right now. I could just do everything from the keyboard like I would do on my Tormach or my router or um, my bigger mill. So I'll tell you what, Joe, this black box is coupled with their new open builds control software. Yeah, which is open source. And the UI is pretty slick. I know So you would be able to write that functionality yourself or pay somebody to implement it. You know, the the, request. I'm not the first person to ask for this. And the fact that the software has been around for as long as it has and we still don't have it makes me think that it's not a trivial task. I, I know it's got something to do with the way uh, the USB streams the packets. Uh, it can't update fast enough in real time. Um, and it, this is where something where like uh, Machine Kit or Linux CNC or dare I say it, Mach 3 really shines yeah. over the MCU based CNC controllers where they're using uh, CPU based or hardware based step generation on the actual compute unit itself and it doesn't have to stream to a separate unit. So yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It, that's like the one thing that's really missing for me. They fix that, I'll probably be a convert. <laughs> so the open the open builds control software, it has the ability for macros. Would you be able to add a macro button that would change the rate of movement? What you could do with a macro, macros are typically something like, um, I want to drill four holes in a sequence. And I want to be able to say, from this point, run this macro that's going to drill these four holes. Or um, like uh, a peck drill operation is a macro. It's a, it's a G code that you call, and inside that code, it calls another separate G code that takes parameters. Now, what you probably could do is run it in MDI mode, which is you send it a single line of code, and I can tell it, like, um, you know, run this distance in X at this feed rate. And, and that's reasonably um, okay. You know, but sometimes, like, often I'll get a piece, and I just need to face the part off. And it's a lot easier to just, like, jog it down and say, okay, this is my zero plane. I'm going to jog off the part, come down a sixteenth of an inch, and move across it at the set speed that I use a slider for. And that, that's one of the things that's really nice in something like PathPilot or Linux CNC that you can do um, that you still can't do in any of the uh, gerbil based controllers that I found. So if somebody's got one that can do that, I want it. I want to know I'd pay money for it. So like send it to me and I'll talk about it on our show because I want it real bad. <laughs> <laughs> So I don't know if this is the same for the Windows and Mac versions, but when I ran the app image on Linux, it hosted a server. So I can access it from my laptop locally, or I could run it on like a Pi and remote it and just pull it up my web browser. I don't know if the Windows version has it like wrapped up in an Electron app or anything. On the one that I just, I just tested it before the show, and it actually hosted a server. So that was really interesting, which yeah. is pretty neat. Hmm. Um, but my favorite part, though, was it has a mobile pendant option where you click mobile pendant icon and it pulls up a QR code with the smartphone icon. You can scan the QR code on your phone and now your phone becomes a mobile pendant to jog the machine around and start and stop oh, the job cool. and stuff. So I'm really excited to try that out. I'm not going to lie. Huh. That's absolutely horrifying to me. I know it is. It's great. Uh, absolutely <laughs> horrifying. <laughs> um, huh. 
It's about I can as bad as having your CNC run by uh, JavaScript. Yeah, <laughs> it's right up there. It, it's only worse because it's a CNC run by JavaScript that is also being remotely controlled by a smartphone. Mm. <sighs> Living yeah. the dream. So it does totally run a server. I can get to it. Um, I can get to it from a different computer. I just booted it up on Windows. I I know at least a couple months ago when I was talking to Peter about this, it they didn't have a Pi image. Um, but they still don't. Um, yeah. There are instructions to, on how to compile it yourself, oh, but it's nice. not officially supported. But he did put out the instructions for it, which I thought was very classy. Yeah. yeah. So let's see here. I'm gonna open up the jog widget. And I believe yeah. that was for the uh, the standalone app. I would I would expect if it was just like a base Raspbian install with no GUI and then just have it auto start the server might be fine. So there's Ooh. the, there's the pendant. So to give you guys an idea of how hard that okay. was, I, I just installed it right around the time Aaron said, uh, the pendant thing. Cause I, I wanted to see it. So it didn't take long and it was pretty easy. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I'm real tempted to replace B, C, and C with it just for how simple it is. Because I'm a simple, I'm a simple user. It looks really good. If, if it wasn't for the fact that I'm running B, C, and C on a Pi, hmm, I'll play this <laughs> later. All right. So, uh, to our our topic, I think is a good idea because we're 25 minutes in and we have three topics left to talk about that are going to destroy us on time. <laughs> yeah um well and we kind of teased it a little bit earlier we wanted to talk a little bit about um the current reception of patio um and everything that's happened over the past week um, oh yeah and and what happened today yeah uh so patio today uh released uh beta 5.1 and uh, they released some new features and you got to give me a second here because I haven't had a chance to look at them because I was Base on mode. vacation all weekend. Vase mode? Vase <laughs> mode! Oh, that's so exciting. I love vases. All the vases. All the vases belong to us. Vases. Vases mode. <laughs> no, that's awesome. Oh, and multi-material models are now alignable. And filament diameter is now a number, not a drop-down box. Because, wow, that's funny. Um. Oh man, if they got a lot print, of pushback on that, if that print mm. is done by Pavio, one one of these days I'm gonna slip up and I'm gonna call it by its code name and it's gonna be hilarious. I think it's already been brought up in the forums and Reddit and Twitter. I think. What the code name? Yeah. Oh, all right. Well, you know, at least I won't be the first person. I don't think it's a secret. Bag. Good. <laughs> so the reception has been questionable and i think it's all due to one person and his name yep. sounds like bob or bomb bomb <laughs> yeah yeah you had one job joe i had one yeah. job <laughs> look how far my, my, how far yep that's I, what i thought that's what i thought <laughs> i personally think it's multiple failures from multiple people i don't every everything about this even in the logo it says patheo is in beta so if all the news outlets wanted to ignore the fact that it was in beta, that's their problem for for Tom to put out his video the way he did. I was really frustrating to me because he like openly glared over things that it, the software did well and then said that it didn't do things that it did. And that annoyed yeah. me. And, and that's yeah. been most of the pushback because everyone's like, yeah. have you seen Tom's video? It doesn't even retract. And it totally does. It's retracted for like six months. Yeah. <laughs> I think it was slightly yep. irresponsible of him. With, yeah, with the audience that he has. Exactly. Yeah. Having the following he has, he should be holding himself to a higher standard knowing that people are just going to take his opinion as truth. And well, and that's run. it. It seems like that was it was rushed, and it was almost I don't want to say clickbaity, but almost clickbaity rushed. Uh, oh yeah, to where he like it was very pushed out. He didn't fully dive into everything that was within the software, 
and he put it out with a marginalized opinion to an audience that was way larger than he should have done that for. Um, and that's, unfortunately, the masses have seen this now and are running with that opinion rather than researching the stuff for themselves. And it, that's a huge problem. And I'll tell you, this isn't the first time Tom's been accused of that. No. That's so, that. Unfortunately, I have heard that as well. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, it, that's frustrating to me because there there's a lot of uh, YouTube 3D printer guys that I expect things like that from. And Tom's mm -hmm. not one of them. Tom's been around since the beginning. He's he's paid his dues. If you watch his early videos, he built the early rep wraps. He's he's done the horrible, horrible things that we had to do to make 3d printers work. So he, he should, he should be bigger than this, but yeah. It, it, and it's not to say that we're like bashing it. It's more to say that like, we're disappointed. Yeah. And the fact that like, dude, we, we've been in this together. Like we all want this community to be the best that it possibly can be. Why are you not fully looking into something like this? We had a, we had an episode a while back where we totally discussed this of like, the the market is getting too oversaturated with just BS. And although this is not pointing directly towards that, it's very much this in the same token of like, we have to be good stewards of our community. And if you're not putting in the full research that you should, it's this is not good for the community as a whole. I mean, especially now that we live in a post truth society. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, and you know that's not to say like I'm I'm not saying that Tom should say, say should not say things are bad. If, yeah. if if he reviews something and it's bad, hundred percent. You know, let everyone know. I'm glad that he is a no holds barred reviewer when he doesn't like something. I think that's very important. But I I do feel like he should do his best to make things make sure things are accurate. Yeah. And even even if I think when he reviewed uh, Patheo, you know, it was probably about a month before it was released. So I, there's oh. things that he could have done where like, you know, hey, you know, that was true. Then they were pushing updates every other day during that time. So a lot of things changed between the time he made that video and the time it was released it, or the uh, the beta was released. So I don't know. It made it made it hard. But like I really don't understand the amount of community pushback there's been. Mm. Can, can can you guys give me something? Like everyone's like, oh, they expect us to do their testing for free. And it's like, yeah. Have you have you never been part of a beta? That's I, what it is. <laughs> like beta it, video games have been a thing for years, and I guarantee you, you guys have done EA's testing for free and, you know, fuck them. Not even that. So, How many alphas have people bought into? Yeah. Oh, yeah. All the alpha survival oh, yeah. games. No, and, and, like, people will buy into that. They'll yeah. actually pay to get into yeah. that. And it's... Yeah, no, it's completely... It's it, it seriously... It's something where it's, like, it's always easier to have a villain than it yeah. is to, to praise something. And it's always easier to hate on this. And I feel like... I don't even know. I like it feels like a lot of people were under the perception that this was going to be full release and not beta and they just wanted to hate on this because they felt like it was not fully done. But it was in beta. Yeah. Like it it's in that stage of like, hey, we want feedback. We want to be able to improve this product. And just so many people just like rather than building this thing up to be the best they could they just continually pointed out all of this all this stuff that was well known and didn't even really dive it it, it from reading yeah. the stuff that i did it felt like a lot of people were just regurgitating what some people were saying yeah and it like it, it there it felt like there wasn't even a lot of people actually using it and what i don't get is like everyone's been frustrated for six months to a year with simplify and a couple of the other slicers like why aren't you taking the community feedback why aren't you implementing mm -hmm. the features we want why aren't you doing this why aren't you doing that and then e3d comes out with a slicer that and and they say tell us what you want 
give us your feedback. We want to implement this stuff based on the users. And then everyone's just like, well, fuck you guys. Nah, so, we're not going to do that. I don't think they delivered that message as well as they should have, which I think is part of the problem. Okay. I think they could have put more effort into making sure all of the news articles that were released that day, like when we released our episode, those news articles, th- those, those, those agencies were known ahead of time that these things were going to, that these things were going to happen. So they have time to write them. It should have been heavily stressed that, you know, make sure that they know the reader knows is an open beta. It's not a, it's not a finished product. We are releasing it to gather the feedback of the users in the community. And I feel like that message was lost in translation. Yeah, but that message isn't sexy. That message isn't clickbaity. Like, I, yeah, but that's kind of the whole part of the marketing department, though, is to make sure that your message gets put across. Yeah, but there's only so much you can do with the media. Like, you, even just interviews that we've done, like, as the makerspace. Like, remember the 3D printing and guns thing, Chris? Oh. Like, like we walked away oh. from that and we're like, we did everything we could to make sure that this is not a clusterfuck. Yeah. Praise God, <laughs> this guy doesn't sensationalize us and like click and, and cut what we say. And you know, we well, he, he didn't, but he totally no, could. No, luckily, yeah, that that was a whole thing. I even didn't allow my identity be, to be released on that mainly cuz I was I was scared of what was going to happen. Oh yeah, I uh, forgot about that. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I was I was just like a black shadow. I was <laughs> the man in anonymous black. 3D printer. <laughs> um, but that was a whole thing where it was like we couldn't control what they were gonna say. Luckily, we we sat down with him and we talked for probably about three hours, I want to say, over the course of that whole thing. Yeah. And we were able to kind of talk him through like what the actual news was and what the actual like so story was with this and we were able to educate him enough to make him more educated on the topic and he was very receptive um i'm kind of with joe on this one though i think we both know at the end of the day the guys at e3d know way better than they they would have constantly been saying like this is beta this is we are totally collecting info on this this is not release i think that more likely than not, that was that was not as sexy as a headline, and yeah. so that wasn't how it was released. Um, and I, just the media itself was not the best stewards of that, yeah. and unfortunately, it it got dragged into this bigger mess than it should have been. Like, so yeah, <laughs> what we're saying is, don't just trust people on what's great and what's not go out and try it yourself especially when it's free and it takes 10 minutes to try you know all all the like most popular printers already have profiles set up just go try it and 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 if it doesn't work out well tell them and tell them why don't just go bitch on the internet even though you know that's probably the more fun thing to do it's not useful like nothing drives me more nuts than people just complaining on the internet to hear their keyboards clack and not actually try to contribute back to the project. We could do a whole episode on call out culture that oh my god uh, that yeah. Twitter has created. I'm gonna make this we're we're gonna we're gonna close this part with making it real, real, real easy <laughs> to understand. And I'm gonna tease Joe uh and he's gonna get frustrated with me. I love it if already. Really? want to understand this culture if you really want to be able to understand what we're saying when was the last time you trusted a review because currently on rotten tomatoes alita battle angel has a 45 percent from critics those guys are idiots that movie is great (laughs) (laughs) i totally see why they why they would say that but that movie was phenomenal (laughs) so just it experience the the thing for yourself do your own research and then make a a educated opinion if you spend the time actually going in and learning about it then you make your opinion based off that you ain't going to hear crap from any of us because that's you are making your own informed decision but that's what it should be at the end of the day don't 
rely on, you wouldn't rely on somebody to tell you what movie you're going to go see because you want to make that decision yourself. And so the same thing should go for this. The same thing should go into, if you're going to use a software, use it yourself. It takes time. Yeah, I know it does. But in that time, you will be able to not only learn more from it, but you'll also be able to make an informed decision at the end of it. Yeah. You know, I just, <sighs> I just watched um, the new uh, Flat Earth documentary on Netflix. And uh, flat earth documentary. <laughs> oh, it's really good, actually. Okay. And, uh, okay. you know, the guys there, you know, they didn't want to just take hundreds of years of science's opinion on whether or not the earth is round or not. So they're taking upon themselves to form their own opinions. They, they formed these groups and they crowdsourced like a laser gyroscope. It's a $20,000 gyroscope in order to measure the rotation of the earth and to determine if it actually rotated the 15 degrees per hour it's supposed to their hypothesis was it wouldn't and of course their incredibly expensive and precise instrument correctly measured 15 degrees exactly and they're like hmm <laughs> there must be some other and there must be other variables we need to eliminate first <laughs> but they're doing you know they're doing what others you should be doing which is you know go out you know do your own research figure it out yeah i will say they're having a very hard time Proving their point, but that's neither here nor Man. there. My my okay. f my favorite flat earthers are the ones that are like NASA isn't real, and I'm like, boy, I'm gonna call my friends and tell them they don't have to go to work tomorrow. <laughs> Dude, the documentary is great. It is very good. I love it. I'm gonna watch it. It is very good. It makes you want to cry <laughs> for humanity. I I love the the conspiracy theories. I just I I love hearing like what justifications they have for like oh I don't know the people of Australia that they're all just like border patrol agents for the border or the ice wall. It's like man, I wish that was oh. real. I wish that Australians were just like I don't know, man. When, when Dominic <laughs> sends me packages, they get here awful fast for how far away <laughs> Australia supposedly is. Just saying. I mean, <laughs> man, that that right there, that's the evidence we need. <laughs> oh, so my favorite part that, which is why I brought this up, is there's a guy on there who is a legit maker and he made Flat Earth Globes for the Flat Earth Conference and they were okay. immaculate. Like, he made, like, a pressure acrylic forming fixture to to vacuum form the acrylic domes and he had like led lights that would circle around the flat disc to to replicate the sun and moon which kind of yes. just like i don't know orbit yes. around the center of the disc okay and i mean i mean the the craftsmanship was off the wall and he also made a a fully electric chopper with a wooden enclosure the frame was all metal but like the aesthetic outside bits were all like hard, nice hard hardwood, and it was beautiful. And it was all electric, and like that dude was legit. And I'm like, this it. guy alone <laughs> is worth watching the documentary. I wonder if there's any on eBay now. He called it the the Flat Earth Rider. Excellent. <laughs> it was I'm great. about it. All right, what all were right. we actually supposed to talk about this episode? Because we're 42 minutes in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I guess, um, so the last part that we are going to jump into a little bit, um, we're, we're going to spend a little bit of time on this. We won't go over too much, but we just kind of wanted to reminisce a little bit. Um, we've been, we're 20 episodes in, uh, of actual, uh, content between the three of us with plus guests sometimes. Um, and we've, we've covered a lot of topics. We've gone through a lot of things and, uh, as some of you may have noticed, uh, we've upgraded our audio setup. We've been able to kind of get some better uh, equipment to go in, and we've made the podcast better over time, um, which has been awesome. Uh, and we've we've gotten to kind of explore a lot of different topics and do all that during that time. Uh, and so I kind of wanted to just touch on um, what have been some of your favorite memories going through this, and then what is something that you are looking forward to in the future. Do you want to start, Aaron, or you want me to? This has been a great learning opportunity for me. I love jumping in head first into new things and figuring it out. First, it was learning all the intricacies in, in, a, in an audio recording environment. You know, I started mm. on my 
old computer desk out in the other room with a blue yeti and listening to it and then listening then watching some youtube videos on proper audio setups and hearing hearing my audio versus joe's it's like oh, i could do it a little bit better and then <laughs> you know i spent time making this little this tiny little uh recording studio out of acoustic blankets which is finally done by the way yes those nice. two blankets finally came back in from florida after being shipped from here to Florida and back. <laughs> accidentally. <laughs> but I mean, it's like super quiet in here now. But um, and since then, I got the new mic, uh, the Focusrite solo, you know, USB interface. I've also spent a, quite a bit of time learning how to edit the podcast, which was a whole other you know, yeah. challenge. And that's still something yeah. I'm constantly learning on. Yeah. But, you know, it's been great. Yeah, absolutely. For me, learning how to interview people has probably been my favorite part um, going through and uh, you're just just trying to figure out how to approach people and interview them off the cuff. Um, a lot of the interviews that I did for IMTS were people that I just randomly met or you know didn't know and didn't have a lot of planning ahead of time. Um, we still have, I think, one of those to release. Uh, you know, just the, the people that I've been able to meet through doing the podcast has been so much fun. Frankly, I can't believe we're still doing this. Uh, we have not missed a week other than the Thanksgiving week in 28 weeks, if I counted right. Uh, when Dang. I when I counted a couple minutes ago, like that's that's huge. I've never stuck with a long long term project this long. So yeah, yeah. same here. Um, <laughs> yeah, having the two of you guys here to kind of keep me accountable has definitely helped. Um, but like, this has been a really, really fun thing. So I'm really looking forward to the next hour long we do this. Well, and it, it, it's hard to like kind of think about stopping when we continually see success. Like, yeah, um, I think one of the biggest things. I, I'm going to say a couple is like, um, thank you for listening. Uh, we've watched our audience grow uh, consistently. I think we have 36 listeners now. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's, no, it's been way awesome. more than that. Like way more. We <laughs> So we actually doubled our listeners this past week from the Pathio episode. Oh, we, we normally averaged around. Don't say 20 that. to 20, not 20. 220 to 240 ish listeners a week. And we, with this last, this past week, we got upwards of 400 some listens. What? Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. What? Oh my that's God. Crazy. That's, that's incredible. Oh man. It's going to make this next week cool, real actually. depressing watching the stats. Wow. <laughs> but that, it, like, that's to say, like, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for everybody who has uh, tuned in and just made this such a amazing project to work on um, and just consistently go through this. Yeah. Um, like this is it, it's been awesome to just see this kind of grow. Um, I mean, personally, one of my favorite things going looking back is just having a uh, having a platform for us to be able to connect on. That may be a little bit selfish, but like. Um, we don't get a lot of time to like hang out and talk, but this platform allows us to just get together and just kind of hash out stuff uh, and be able to talk. This has been some of the funnest time that I've been able to vent about certain topics. Yes. Um, Very just much. the episodes that I get yelly on and I just get really passionate have been some of my favorites of just being able to really be passionate about something um and have that platform to do so so that's it, it's an amazing thing to be able to work on with you guys and and do all this stuff so um thank you uh aaron and, and joe like this is this has been awesome to work on you get work with you guys on you're um, welcome yes <laughs> very much <laughs> um and then look looking forward like i mean it, it's short term but man i can't wait for rep rep like i know it's, it's going to be so much fun. I'm tired um, just thinking of it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and we, we hope to see. I'm going to be tired um, going into it. 
Right. <laughs> we hope to see some of you guys there. Um, we really are looking forward to growing the audience there and then also meeting you guys. Yes, so uh, very if much. you haven't heard about it, um, we've mentioned it on almost every episode and we're <laughs> looking forward to doing some episodes coming up, possibly with some people that are getting ready to go there. Um, so short term, but really looking forward to rep rep and just really looking forward to the future of this podcast and, and seeing where it goes and seeing what more we can do with it. So, um, I think with that, uh, I think that's a just good tone to end it out on. Do you guys have anything more you want to shout out? I mean, I just want to say like when we started talking about doing rep rep with the podcast, in December, in my head, I was like, should we plan that far out? Are we still going to be doing this <laughs> then? Like, I don't know. Like, I, I, I almost wonder if I see the end in the next couple of weeks. Like, <laughs> I wonder if I should even get excited about this. And then, like, Rep Rap's like two, three weeks away. Like, we almost can't not do it now because, you know, <laughs> we're sponsors and stuff. But, like, we um, got money in it now. <laughs> yeah, we do. Um, I'm just so thrilled with the way this is all gone. Like doing this for a year is actually in sight. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like totally in sight. And, uh, you know, I just, I spent a weekend driving around listening to podcasts, which is something I never do. Um, because I listen to audiobooks all the time, but I was with my wife all weekend and that has me like all energized for new ways to tell stories and approach new topics. And these guys are going to be so frustrated with me for the next couple of weeks. Cause I'm all excited about things. I don't know, man. It's it's gonna be great. It's gonna be great. Uh, hell yeah, Aaron. You got anything, man? Um, thanks for listening. <laughs> You're so much less excited. That's all I have. I don't know. <laughs> nah, fair enough. Fair enough. I mean, we wouldn't really, probably wouldn't keep doing this if it wasn't for people actually listening. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like that 35 yeah. listeners club is getting so big. <laughs> you guys, thank you. Thank you so much for listening. Um, this has been Makers on Tap with Christian, Aaron, and Joe. Um, we will see you next week, and have a great one. Keep making stuff. This is the end of the podcast. <laughs> yes. We're getting so good at that. 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 That.